Hi and uh, welcome to this session. We're very pleased today to be working with Active Decorum as part of their Health and Wellbeing Week. Uh, we do lots of work across the community in health and wellbeing as part of Trim Talks and Planet Munch. This is our backdrop here in the orchard and also for my story with Hertfordshire Libraries. Um, so today I am making some recycled flowers. So these are daisies and we've chosen daisies as, as part of the My Story project which is an Arts Council funded project where people of Hertfordshire submit their stories inspired by adolescence, transition and change. And we as artists translate those stories into creative outputs. Um, so we had a story that came in that's a really lovely story from St Albans and it tells us somebody's adolescence and the time they spent outdoors making daisy chains. So I thought this would be a really simple make for you guys to do today as part of Active Decorum's Health and Wellbeing Week. Uh, we've gone for using as many recycled materials as possible, um, so we're kind of led by the materials that we found in our house. Uh, and I raided the rubbish and I found an egg box. I think most people would ha will have an egg box. Um, and it's a good basis and it's kind of led the shapes for me too. Um, but you could use any cardboard really. So if you find any cardboard in your rubbish, that's a good starting point. Um, I also found in the rubbish um, an old white carrier bag. So I thought that was perfect for kind of daisy chain petals and that made a slightly different design um, so it made this kind of more flouncy daisy a larger one and really with any session like this it's just to give you ideas and for you to come up with your own ideas and whatever the rubbish tells you to create from it why not go ahead and create it um, also for this session You'll need some paints. Post paint's quite good because they don't ruin your clothes or the floor or the table. Um, you'll need some water and some paint brushes. Um, a nice clear workspace. It's really good to clear your workspace. Um, all of your recycled materials and any kind of twine, elastic, thread or string that you have to create your daisy chains. You could also shred paper to do this, but anything's gonna allow you to bind them together because we're gonna need to glue all these bits and bobs together uh, to create one piece in a minute. Okay, so there's our daisies. So, we raided the rubbish, got our rubbish together, and next we're gonna cut our egg boxes into shapes. So I'm going to start with the side that actually stores the eggs um, and it's good if you're little you might need some help with your scissors and if you're working with children you might want to find some little scissors. Um, I've got really big scissors here um, and a very good thing is to always if you are working with scissors for the first time, always keep the blade pointing away from you or down and away from your eyes. And if you're passing them, hold them like this and don't run around the room with them, okay? Um, so I cut the first bit out of my egg box. So that's the bottom of the egg there. Um, that's where the egg sits. And I'm gonna do that again. Keep on snipping, this is good practice. It's quite tough to get through, but keep going, you'll get there. And you'll notice as you cut the shape. You're always noticing different shapes as you make things, which are really, is a really nice part of the process. Like these look like a pair of eyes. I think we'll maybe use those in another creation at some point in the future. But today, they are going to be in the middle of our daisy. So you can see this shape here is slightly bigger than this one because you could make a really delicate daisy or a slightly larger one. So can you see the natural circle shape at the bottom of the eggs? I'm going to quickly cut these out. So again, mind your fingers. And we're just following the shape that's already in the egg box. It's very convenient. It means we don't even have to do any drawing round, anything round. So we'll take some time snipping out. We're going to need two of these shapes per daisy. So I'm just going to quickly cut four now because I cut two of the egg boxes out. 
Now, if you were just using card or paper and something else that you found in the rubbish, um, it'd be good to find a nice round template to draw around. Like this is about the size of a Pritt stick lid or a glue stick lid, so you could draw around that. Or you can see the top of my paint here. That's a good shape for the middle of a daisy. So you could use that to draw around instead and that could create your nice round template shape for your daisy. If you wanted to move into the plastic bag to make the other style of daisy, you might want to use something like this huge reel of masking tape that I found at the studio. So when we're templating, we put it down, we make sure our materials are nice and flattened out. And if you've got a felt pen or a Sharpie, and around we go. So yeah, raid the rubbish, then raid the house for round objects and you'll be good to go. So there you go, there's my perfect circle. If you're feeling really brave, you could always go freehand and just cut out a circle the way you go. Because it doesn't really matter because you can straighten it up when you create the petals and cut the shapes out. So there we go, so we've got our nice round out of the plastic bag and you may need to use that technique if you are working on um, bits of card or flat paper that you found around the house. Okay, so we've cut out our shapes ready for the middle of our daisies and now it's time for some painting. Now this is the good bit. So I, I've got a little palette here that I've been using but you could use half a cereal box or a bit of cardboard to squeeze your paints out on. It's quite nice to squeeze it out. Uh, you might want to blend it with some water because it goes on easier. So have your water next to you and your paintbrush at the ready. And it's great to have something to work on, like this bit of cards, really handy, um, because then you're going to have somewhere to put it for dry time. So I'm going to lay those out. Um, I'm using a different pot to wash my white brush and one to wash my orange brush. Now with the white, we are going to be painting the egg box, so the bit where we haven't cut out, this flat side here. And that's going to create our petal, petals for the daisies. So we want a nice thick coat and everybody loves a bit of painting, don't they? So we're just going to slap it on. So keep going. It might need two coats because you see on an egg box you've got all that print. Uh, you don't really want any of that to be visible. Um, yeah, and just, just enjoy layering it up. Get it all over the inside. And then do the inside section because we're going to be cutting out some nice straight shapes as you can see from the daisies. They're very straight petals. So I've got the inside done. Then I'm going to work on this edge here, straight over the top, nice and smooth. If there's any bumps in, paint them out. Just keep on layering it on. I've got a nice big paint paintbrush here, so it's slapping on really nicely. And put that back in your white pot. And you may want to leave that to dry before you put a second coat on, but you're probably going to need about 15 minutes of dry time now. Um, first of all, we can do the middle of our daisies. So we've got a really nice, vibrant yellow here. You're going to get a bit messy. It's a certain inevitability with painting. I think that's a good thing. So we're going to crack on with the yellow. Do both sides. They will get a little bit stuck and you will need to touch them up where the paint's peeled off afterwards. But that's absolutely fine. There we go, on with the yellow. Just a few more to go. Nearly there. Nice and bright. And if you get any ideas for other creations while you're doing it, why not? explore that possibility as well. They're like nice bright little sunshines, aren't they? Okay, 
So there we go. So now that's going to need to go away for some dry time. So we've got our white flat box and the yellow centre of our daisies. And I'm just going to pop them down here. And then, step four. Now for some cutting out. So, we have our box and we have the middle of our daisies. You see how some of these may need a little bit of touching up where some of the paint has come off and I've got all different sizes there too. I also kept some other parts of the egg box because you can see there's potential in there to maybe create a little flower vase um, or cut them out. You can actually make a slightly different design daisy where you opened it up and splayed all the petals out like that. So really experiment, you know, this is up to you. These are your daisies. Um, okay, so this is the top side, which is nice and dry. So the first thing to do is to cut off the bits that you haven't painted. I'm gonna just get rid of those. And also there's room for a bit of your own choice here as well. You can make your daisy petals as long or as short as you like. This is up to you. So what we need are nice, thin, straight lines. Snip, snip, snip. Spend some time to get a nice straight line. And you can see they are beginning to appear. So you can leave them long or we can nip them in half like this. Just get a good pile of them chopped up and keep on going. Luckily I've already cut lots of these out. It's good to have a bulk so that you can really make lots of daisies in one go and that will really speed up the process for you. So we're going to have lots of petals and our centrepiece and if you're making anything out of the plastic bags as well um, we will want to shape those a little bit so really just by trimming into the plastic again be careful of your fingers but just move around the circle and gently trim so you get a nice kind of flower shape starting to appear can you see that it's quite nice as well because there's a bit more movement in the plastic so if you made a massive daisy chain like that, it would look very effective. So now, that's our final bits of cutting out. We have all the elements we need for our daisy. And now we're on to our final bit. So hopefully you've got some PVA glue or a glue gun. Glue guns are excellent, but I know not everybody has one. So I'm using PVA today. Um, Pritt stick's also good, but make sure you use a really thick bit of it. So scrape the middle of the daisy across the Pritt stick so you get loads of glue on it. Uh, so finally, we're going to attach, build our daisy and attach it to our chain. So our chain is ever growing. The ever growing daisy chain. So I'm going to put one side down flat. Make sure the brightest yellow bit is pointing outward. And then I'm going to select some of my petals. So I've actually got lots of different styles of petals now. And this is the fiddly bit. So this might keep you busy for a little while. But what we're gonna do is put the stretchy bit of elastic, or for you it might be a little piece of twine or some wool or some cotton, whatever you've been able to find to create your daisy chain. It'll probably be different for everybody depending on the resources that they've found at home. And we're going to stick all of our petals in like that. Okay, so really again it's up to you. You may, may want to make some bits thinner at this stage. You might want to put even more petals in. So I'm going to put some more in now and try and get them as even as you can. 
There we go. It's looking pretty bright. There's room for a little bit of adjustment once you put the PVA on. And then we're going to use our PVA glue. And another of the yellow centre circles. It's probably easier if I give a really nice squidge into the middle there of the PVA. And then you're going to want to land it. Land it on top. And then push down with your finger a bit so it's a bit more secure. And push in the petals. So they're secured in place. Okay. So there we are. We have another daisy, just like that, to add to our daisy chain. And keep on making them to make the longest daisy chain you've ever made. And maybe go outside and try and make one for real. And send us your pictures of your massive daisy chain. If you add them to elastic, you could also wear them as headbands. And of course, you can wear them around your neck as necklaces. So good luck. Thank you very much. And send us your pictures of your daisy chains.